We learned that the architect of a heavily armed illegal casino operation in Markham has twice had FaceTime with this prime minister. And surprise, he also has ties to the CCP. Canadian China cons Chinese consulates may not do it directly. They have their proxies. That's a wink wink thing. Uh, they have business people arranging for buses and paying uh, stipends, uh, something like $20 or $50 a day to bus in people either to nominate the meeting or to do counter protesting. Which Canada has, so uh, I think, I believe we have five or six, uh, three in Toronto, now two in Montreal, and one in Vancouver. Welcome to Canada Wide. Today we will listen to a whistleblower who mentions about the Chinese government paying siphons to move people around the GTA for protests, as you heard, and also the police stations in Canada. And the last thing we will go through is the Major McKenzie Number no. 5 Club Casino that Trudeau was involved with. Let's have a listen and then we'll go through exactly what's going on. You have uh, talked about uh, observations um, that you suspected or you've spoken to media about um, suspected uh, interference by the regime in Beijing in the electoral process in Canada, specifically uh, federal nominations. Um, I believe uh, in, in one instance you were talking about uh, busloads of people who had been sent to a nomination as arranged by um, agents of Beijing operating in Canada. Um, with, with about a minute, uh, if you could tell us, uh, tell us about that. Standard op modus operandi. Um, China cons Chinese consulates may not do it directly. They have their proxies as a wink-wink thing. Uh, they have business people arranging for buses and paying uh, stipends, uh, something like $20 or $50 a day, to bus in people either to nomination meetings or to do counter-protesting. And we have seen this uh, in one of the fights uh, if, at the Toronto District School Board where they bus in international students from Waterloo, from Guelph, into Toronto uh, to do this kind of thing. And, and this is something that I've seen firsthand, and this is something that I've been uh, told uh, firsthand by many other writings as well. So it's quite obvious that uh, the Chinese government pays for people to move around. And I, I think it's the WeChat where they get uh, this, uh, this capability to talk to Canadians behind, uh, you know, behind the scenes to do this. And how come it still happened with the pro-Palestinian, like that governments around the world could do protests in Toronto and that's okay. There's nothing, there's no government that tries to stop that. Like there needs to be something where you can't do that. And these people, how do they have the time? Do they take off a, a sick day or do they take a vacation day to do this? Because I'm really puzzled how many people can come out and do that and have the time for that. And when they send these videos back home, it looks amazing that Toronto stands with us or Canada. It's almost like they got, it's almost like we have Trudeau in his pocket. He's, we have control of him and he's allowing this and the West agrees with you. That's, that's what it looks like is going on here with the Chinese interference and the other one. That's, uh, that's quite uh, disappointing. Let's listen to the next part of this, of the police stations. Can you tell us about the Chinese police stations that we've heard about in the media? Yes. Uh, this is something that has been exposed uh, by a Spanish uh, non-governmental organization, and, uh, and we have not known about it before. However, once it has been pointed out to, out to us who runs these stations and who's behind, who are the uh, civil organizations behind these uh, the police station, we were not surprised because these are well-known names. I wanted to point out to you, uh, Monsieur, in Brossard and in Montreal, uh, Journal de Montréal recently, uh, just yesterday, had an uh, article about two police stations in Brossard and in Montreal. And that was run by the same woman who is a city councillor of Brossard. Mm -hmm. so, and she openly advertised herself as being a partner of the Chinese Communist Party. So this is the thing that, you know, I, I uh, uh, first of all, we're not surprised at that this actually happens. Do you believe that these tactics were used elsewhere in the world, or is this new here in Canada, or 
Has it been used? Have these tactics been used elsewhere? Uh, these uh, tactics have been used in, in many, many other countries. Uh, I, th I believe they have identified 100 stations around the world, mm -hmm. of which Canada has, uh, I think, I believe we have five or six, uh, three in Toronto, now two in Montreal, and one in Vancouver. How is it a Spanish company knows more about what's going on in Canada than the RCMP? And it could be that it's just a blind eye towards it, and perhaps, you know, those five eyes, why Canada's not involved in a lot of that because of this because now it takes other countries to tell canada what's going on because of the current government in ottawa is ignoring these facts and it's very shocking that it comes out but once again the mainstream media doesn't really talk about this at all because you know where where's the funding come from the business model is uh, the corporate welfare you know that's that's really why that where they get the money they can't say anything about these uh, police stations that are there. And then what happens with the, uh, once they contact someone in the government, how they can change them and say, you know, someone back home, we're going to do something, you know, back in China, we're going to do this or that to them if you don't do this, or maybe they're going to put Bitcoin or some money in or, or something like that. You never know. This is just a, an assumption of, of what happens or what could happen. So let's keep going too with the last part with tying this together with Trudeau and the scandal that never got anywhere because of some information that the, the police just happened to mishandle. Let's have a listen. I asked the government about ties between senior liberals like Joe Pesca Solito and Raymond Chan and individuals charged in a gangland shooting with the Chinese Communist Party. Now we've learned that the architect of a heavily armed illegal casino operation in Markham has twice had FaceTime with this Prime Minister. And surprise, he also has ties to the CCP. Canadians deserve to know. Is the Prime Minister's proximity to the Chinese Communist Party elites in Canada affecting his ability to protect Canadian interests? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have always followed all the rules around fundraising. We'll continue to, but we actually went above and beyond that in, in, in making sure that all of our fundraisers are done in public spaces and we invite the media to it and publish the lists of people who attended. We encourage the Conservative Party of Canada to do exactly the same. When will they stop raising money in secret and instead be open with their fundraisers, invite the media to attend their fundraisers and actually demonstrate that they can have confidence in Canadians as they ask Canadians to have confidence in them. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Well, the Prime Minister should hope that Canadians don't judge him by the company that he keeps. And he's just the latest Liberal with worrisome ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Chan, Pesca Solito, Barton, McCollum. These latest bad actors operating their illegal casino in Markham, just like the ones arrested, arrested this weekend in B.C., are helping arrest protesters in Hong Kong. But don't worry, they've donated millions of dollars to the Trudeau Foundation. Why should Canadians trust this defective Liberal government complete with its Made in China sticker? Honourable Prime Minister. I've addressed that question, but again, it points out that the Conservatives are focused on trying to score political points at a time where Canadians expect people to come together and work for them in this COVID crisis. We will continue to focus on supporting Canadians in this second wave. We will be there for families, for workers, for small businesses. We will be there to support them. That music was only put in because it just goes into the normal routine of reading a script and practicing in front of a mirror forever. But uh, they're important points, but it, it doesn't matter. He just he says that for the last five years, uh, so he doesn't really care about it. Let's go back to the that casino. casino was in Markham, Ontario, and it was reported that individuals have moved into high level political circles advocating for Chinese interests and met Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on two occasions in 2016, where Trudeau was pressed by the conservatives, as you just uh, heard him do that. But what happened to all this uh, 20,000 square foot casino with a lot of money and a lot of other things that go with casinos if there's no laws, if you know what I mean? Whatever happened to that? And you know what happened? It sort of disappeared for uh, Trudeau. 
which is sort of typical from the RCMP or some cop messing something up or misplacing some information that uh, it all went away. And luckily, the, uh, they could go away with uh, COVID was a good time for them to hide that stuff and just bury all this stuff. Another convenience for them. Those are three examples of some interference in Canada. And this week, there is another uh, committee that's going on for that. And I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching. Best goodbyes. See you in the next video.